Yep. You got him? Yep. Just a wee guy. Nice. There we go. There we go. Yeah, a little northern. And being in the lodge business, you probably don't fish as much as you'd want to now because you're always working, huh? You know what? Being in the lodge business, yeah, that's a little guy right there. Yeah. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic, but uh, definitely, I don't get to fish much at all. So you know. you're you're enjoying this moment on this nice quiet. It morning, brings back right? memories, is what it does, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> before you owned the lodge. <laughs> From before I owned the lodge, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Coming up. On this week's episode, Bob spends time on the water with tournament angler turned lodge owner Steve Nedwicki. Chaudière Lodge is a five star resort located on the upper French River. There's always work to be done, but Steve steals time away from the lodge to give Bob a taste of the fishing. Steve's passion is to offer an exceptional experience and doesn't disappoint as he guides Bob into the big bass action at Chaudière Lodge. Wow. Here we go. That is a fish of a lifetime right there. Wow, we that thing is a monster! They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. Look <laughs> at the size of that fish. There he is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The real fishing show with Bob Izumi. Big old Great Lakes smallmouth. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa! <laughs> nice jump. Yeah. All right. That is a monster <laughs> smallmouth. Man, that is so cool. Another one, there we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught. Look at that chunk. So that's what we're talking about. Real Fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. <laughs> I love fishing a swim bait. Whoa, you up here, buddy. Very cool. Oh, a little largemouth there. Nice. Hey, we're up here on the French River, just down the way from Lake Nipissing, and I'm at Chaudière Lodge, and uh, Steve Nedwicki really runs a great uh, operation. It's, um, you know, I knew Steve back in the early years of tournament fishing, and I understand he bought this place about six years ago, and I finally had a chance to make it up here, and am I ever glad I did? I've been here now for a couple of days, and the fishing has been just off the charts. The Upper French, Lake Nipissing, a largemouth bass here. The Upper French River, uh, where the lodge is located in Lake Nipissing, is world renowned for musky fishing, walleye fishing, largemouth fishing, smallmouth fishing, pike. It just has a lot of species. Let's see if we can catch another fish. Great place. You got one? Yeah. You're good, man. Right off that boulder, Bob. Very cool. I'm just going to get us off so we don't drift on that boulder. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, I'll grab the net. You stay good down stuff, there, buddy. Yes, you <laughs> stay down there. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice one. Oh yeah, nice large one. There we go. Yeah, very sweet. <laughs> That's a good one, buddy. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> nice start to the morning. Nice That's start it. to the and morning. Did he ever eat it? Yeah, no, you, you had a flat dog on there, yeah. and uh, look at that. Look at how fat that fish is too. Mm. That's yeah. a good one. Okay. Yeah, I think we we need a photo of that one before we keep fishing. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Okay, Bob. here you go. You yeah. hold him. You caught him. Good stuff. There we go. Sweet. Thanks, Bob. That's a great way to start the day right there. Sweet. Good one. Nice fatty. Oh, yeah. We'll put him back. All righty. Go get some 
go get his grandpa. Yeah. Okay, there you go, buddy. Very nice. Yeah. Good job. When they start to waddle as they go, you know they're getting a little bigger. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> it's around the power pole. Battling bass on the French River when we return. Stay tuned. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. The activities of man have always had a negative impact on fish populations. Thankfully, some of our structures show a positive effect. The very best things mankind has created are bridges and culverts. Indeed, some of the most incredible fish we've ever recorded call these places home. On larger crossings, bridge abutments have a special appeal, and it's easy, nearly vertical fishing right below your feet. Well known and therefore heavily fished, docks are classic man-made cover that draw many different species. Frequently overlooked, wooden pilings that anchor boathouses and other structures are particularly attractive to fish. Break walls are another matter. Usually bypassed, they appear static and boring. Even so, we've seen evidence to suggest they hold plenty of heavy specimens. Actually, man-made features don't need to be that extensive to draw fish. Anchor blocks that hold channel markers and buoys in place, for instance. Even chains and ropes add to the equation. Or it can be something as simple as an underwater cable. On the smaller end of the scale, carelessly discarded or lost items are eventually claimed by fish. It's all about something different on the bottom. In effect, man's garbage recycled into someone's home. Yeah. <laughs> come here, come to Papa. Oh, maybe it is Grandpa. I don't know. You know, I can't believe you don't fish tournaments anymore. You, you should get back in it. I don't have time, buddy. <laughs> You're on your game. Is it going around the boat? Yeah. It's yeah. around the power yeah, pole. I know, I know. It's easy, easy. I Do not fall in. Go through the middle of the boat. Okay. <laughs> He's going oh, around buddy. the boat. Hold, hold on. I've never seen... A large mouth take oh, somebody around the boat. I don't know if this is if this is a large mouth, it's a good one. It's gotta be a big pipe. Yeah. Must be. Because I'm telling you, it's pulling. Here, come on up front again. It's up <laughs> okay. here now. I think I've got oh, listen to that. There's drango. no there's no way that's <laughs> nice. a large mouth. Oh no. Oh, it is a large Whoa, mouth. It's a good one. It's in the weed. <laughs> Covered yeah, in Yeah, pick that, Bob. <laughs> Can't believe it took you around the power poles, back of the boat, past those, uh, those kudas, those pliers right there. Oh, man. There you go. Look at that. I'm going to tell you what. Why do you keep catching fish that I have to have pictures of? Hold that to huh? the camera and show them. Look at that. It is not a beauty. Look at the size of the belly on that fish. I got to get another photo of you. Nice, large Beautiful. Mouth. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Thanks, buddy. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to put some of those, uh, some of these fellas in the uh, tackle in shop. Tackle shop. Oh, the yeah. flat dogs? The yeah. flat dogs. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's they, my new favorite bait, buddy. They're just an easy lure to fish for a lot of your guests. You throw them out, hook them in the middle, wacky yep. style. And they're, uh, they're a bait that's been around for a few years now, and they catch fat, they catch fat largemouth. Big fat largemouth, yeah. buddy. They're going in my tackle yeah, shop for sure. Good stuff. Right on, we'll send this one back. Now, I don't know if I can ask for this guy's grandpa. I don't we'll, know. We'll try. Well, go, go find your grandpa. Atta boy. That was so funny how it took you around the boat. Oh, he took off. I couldn't hold on to him. I know, that was awesome. And uh, that's a Iconelli rod from Abu Garcia that's meant for this type of fishing. It's a wacky rigging rod. There yeah. you go. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, this is the first time I've used this rod too. I haven't fished tournaments for quite a few years well since I bought the lodge and um, the action is fantastic well it seems to you caught on quick beautiful let it load up and then yeah. just sweep that nice. hook into them yeah nice little large mo I love it that's one of the things that I really miss is is tournament angling oh yeah oh look at that he is, oh, 
Yep, the he's master. still there. He's running right at me. Uh oh, not one of these runners. Oh, it's a runner. Oh, oh. Pike. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> I thought it was a big bass. I it's saw that white hammer, belly. I know. I saw that white belly, I and I go, "Oh, it's a giant bass." <laughs> oh, oh look at the net job, hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have that hook back, buddy. There we go. Thank Lots you. Lots of pike in Lake Nipissing and on the French River, isn't there? Yeah, and you know what? That little fella is a is a nice nice size to take to, to put in the frying pan for well, sure. Well, you know, lunch. everybody's you know so obsessed with walleye. Pike are great eating, aren't they? Pike are fantastic. To be honest with you, pike are my favorite eating fish they out are. of all of them. Northern pike is as good as any fish that you'll eat. And you know, guests cannot tell the difference. You told us about a survey you did. They couldn't tell the difference with uh, four different plates of fish, right? Yep. Two pike, two walleye. Yep, yep. I, and I was giving free musky baits away for the person that got the combination correct. And out of 40 people, only two got it. And I'm sure it was a guess. Wow. There you go. Northern pike versus walleye. Fine eating. When we return, right. frog bass action at Chaudier Lodge. Stay tuned. Cool frog fish. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman, the outdoor company. Okay. Now, recently, I had a uh, father and daughter rode in, and they were having a debate as to whether you should give a jumping bass or fighting a bass if it's going to jump slack line. Well, in this case here, I got a big smallmouth bass on and the father said to his daughter, always give it slack line when it's going to jump. And the daughter said, no, I don't think so. I think you should always keep a tight line. Well, I'm going to show you. This is a big old smallmouth bass right here. And there's no question you want to keep a tight line. I'm going to have to side with the daughter on this one. Smallmouth or largemouth are notorious for jumping and spinning your hook. So you want to keep a tight line. Now I've got a drop shot rig on and you notice how my rod is loaded up here. So the rod's loaded up and I'm keeping tight line. Now in tournament fishing a lot of times we, we don't uh, want the fish to jump. But I'm just having fun here so we'll see if we can force this fish up to the surface. But really you want to keep a lot of tension on it. And if the drag is pulling, like on this MGX uh, Revo Reel here, don't reel against the drag. Just keep fighting the fish, use your rod to your advantage. And this is, this is a big bass, I'm telling you, it's gotta be, it hasn't even showed itself yet. Came from pretty deep water. Oh, here it comes up here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, <laughs> all right. Big old small mouth. Oh yeah, oh. That's what I'm talking about. That one there is well over four pounds. And as you can see now, drop shot hook, look at that. It's going to pop right out. If I gave that any slack at all, I'd probably have lost this trophy smallmouth. All right. Look at that fat guy. See you later, buddy. Always keep the tension on your line. Make sure that rod's loaded. Hey, welcome back. Um, we had an incredible shore lunch, uh, Steve. You and and uh, your comrade there did a great job cooking a shore lunch. Uh, yeah. Oh boy, those fish and the potatoes, everything was excellent. Oh, it's uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the day, you know. Well, we got the crew from Mystic Oil up from down in the U.S. Yep. and of course they make some some great uh, marine uh, lubricants and oils, and uh, they all enjoyed it. But now we're back fishing again, and we decided to come into the heavy stuff for some largemouth uh, bass. And uh, what we're doing is, is frog fish in here. And this is a, a Sabeel pivot. 
uh, frog. It's got a big weighted keel hook on here. So after a good shore lunch, break out the frogs, do a little frog fishing. Look at that rock, is that beautiful or what? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There he is. You got him? Yep. Nice. Pull him out of the pads. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very cool. And on that frog too, eh? Now you were working that pretty fast through the pads, weren't you? Yeah, I picked it up. Huh. Yeah, that, uh, that frog's a beauty. He ate it. Nice little French River bass, another one. Oh, I love it. You know what, Bob? I love this bass fishing. I don't get enough time to do it. Well, I know, you know, we were talking about that earlier. Once you got in the lodge business, it kind of cut it down. And, you know, you got such a great operation up here, you know, between the, the fine dining, the shore lunches, the accommodations, the guides. You got the whole package up here at Chaudière Lodge, don't you? The Chaudière Lodge is located four and a half hours north of Toronto. We're located on the upper French River and have access into Lake Nipissing. One of the largest emphasis is our fishing. And the fishing on the Upper French River and Lake Nipissing is outstanding. Walleye is, is world class. The muskies, Nipissing holds the live release world record, but the one most underfished species is bass, large and smallmouth bass. And I love bass. It's a fantastic experience. Oh! You got him? Yep. Oh, nice. That was just too cool. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on here. Come yeah, on, let me, get, let me get the net. That was too cool. That's a decent fish uh, off that log. That was cool. Nice job. Right I on. like it. You threw that frog in, the wind caught it, didn't it? <laughs> just a touch. The wind caught it, and that thing exploded on the frog, oh, didn't it? Oh, and he just ate it. Look at that. Is there a hole in its mouth right there? You're not the first person that may have touched this bass. No. But look at that frog. It's disappeared. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect yeah. ending to a perfect stay at Chaudière Lodge. Stay that tuned. a big, large mouth. Mr. Smallmouth in the cabbage weed. You know, one of the cool things about the French River and of course Lake Nipissing is all the different options you have to fish. And what I like to fish during this early season, you know, at the end of June, 1st of July, is I like to fish bumps, humps, and saddles. And what I mean by that is I'll take uh, my electronics, my Laurent, GPS sonar, and I'll look for um, any little humps, any what I call bumps off the shoreline, or any saddles between little islands and humps that go into the shoreline, shallow shelves. And on your Navionics charts, you can see a lot of these. Oh, look at that, it's kind of deformed the back end of that smallmouth. But what, you, what happens is, you'll see a lot of these on your Navionics charts and just by looking at your your uh, graph you can see these spots and they're high percentage spots what they are in a lot of cases is they are um, shallow areas for the fish to come up on during these warm early summer days and uh, they're these are post spawn fish so these fish are just relating to any cabbage weed or boulders on these little bumps, humps, and saddles. And one of the surefire ways of covering water, and yesterday we were catching a lot of fish just before we quit, we're on swim bait, something like a little Havoc grass pig like this on a jig head, just cast it out and use a steady retrieve. Another lure we use is a rib shad. We fish the rib shad, similar way, but it's a larger uh, Berkeley power bait swim bait. And we'll just cover water with these swim baits to emulate some of the bait fish, the small perch and the minnows that are in the area. But one of the keys though is covering water on these little areas that are coming off the shoreline. And I call them bumps, humps and saddles. Oh. 
Whoa, there's a tree in the water there. And all of a sudden the bait stopped. It was, oh, that's a big bass there. That's a large mouth. All of a sudden my swim bait just stopped. And uh, man, oh man, I thought it was snagged, but check this fish out here. <laughs> this is, oh, this is a horse. <laughs> Stay on, baby. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely dip this one. Uh oh, it's going under the boat. Uh oh. Oh, here it comes. Oh yeah, on this Emotion Berkeley rod. This is just such a nice graphite rod. And here we go. Oh yeah, there, that is a horse. Whoa. That is a big, large mouth. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, folks, you know, it's been just such a wonderful time up here fishing out of Chaudier Lodge in northern Ontario, catching all kinds of largemouth bass, a few token smallmouth bass, pike. And what can I say? This place is just uh, a short four hour drive north of Toronto and uh, Steve and his wonderful staff will take care of you. Maybe you'll even catch a few fish just like this. Woo! See you next week right here for some more real fishing. Yeah, all right! <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah! Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs>